Hey guys, um, I'm going to talk to you guys a little bit whoop, about black and white photography. Black and white photography is a really classic style. In um, photography history, we started off with black and white. Um, the element of color is completely stripped and taken away. And the advantage of black and white photography is that you can see so many details without color um, because color can be in a lot of ways quite distracting. Um, so take a look at this photo on this picture and you're going to see things like details of sculptures. Get, get, get. Um, you're going to see details of little spires um, and very intricate little things that maybe you wouldn't really notice. Take a look at all of this detail and the depth of this picture. You wouldn't notice it with a color photography um, because it's almost too much information to take in with our eyeballs. So that's what's great about black and white photography. Um, when you are starting to shoot, I want you to remember that light plays a really major role in your photographs. So this is a sideways light through the trees in a forest. And again, like if this were a color photo, we might not see this gorgeous light the way that we see it in a black and white because, you know, all of that green and all of the textures of the wood in like the browns and the earth tones would be there for our visual information. So it's almost like reading, you know, a really quick meme as opposed to like a long newspaper article. Like you're getting the information pretty quick and easy and it's there for you. Um, take a look at the light in this photo and compare it to the light in the first photo. The light in the first photo, you actually have most of your light source coming from these windows, which is a central focus, right? And it's coming at us from the center. So we're really seeing kind of like this, um, you know, really white brilliance in the center of the photograph. Over here, it's a little to the side, and so it feels different. You know, it feels a little bit more closed in around here. Um, you have framing, so you have the framing of this tree, and the darkness is kind of balanced over here too. So that's why we, when we see that light, it's kind of surprising and interesting. When shooting, you're going to want to think about nice, strong shapes. So that's why I like to say play with light because think about when light hits on a wall and you get maybe the cast shadows of a plant um, that is kind of like showing on the wall. There's a lot of really fun, fun things that you can do with shapes. Um, so start, whenever you're looking around, start looking for those shapes. You know, I look at cast shadows. A cast shadow is where, you know, if light is coming from one side, like on this, you know, tree, it's casting a shadow on the ground behind it if you have strong light. So you can look at, strong shapes uh, with that, but you can even find them in places that you wouldn't expect, like this waterfall. Look at how this shape is just so dominant in this picture. Obviously, it's using contrast a lot, and we'll get to contrast a little bit later, but you can see it really well in this as far as the strong shapes go. Also, Black and white photography is incredible when it comes to texture. So um, this is actually a time-released photograph, and it's showing 
you know, that glassy surface to the water and the mist in here. And you can really notice these things without all of that color involved. Texture's a great thing to take a photo of. So let's talk about composition. We have this thing called the rule of thirds. All right, so the rule of thirds is basically when you're shooting your layout of your picture ideally can be in the rule of thirds. So remember me telling you about size view and placement? That's one strategy with composition, but another strategy with composition or the layout of your picture is to divide your frame up into thirds. So you can see this is thirds horizontally and vertically. And oops, your major focal points in the rule of thirds uh, law, your major focal points ideally are in the areas where these thirds intersect. So one, two, three, four. Okay, one of those places ideally would have your focal point, generally speaking. Another way to use the rule of thirds is to divide up your um, foreground, middle ground, background, or what have you into thirds. So the major parts of your photo, take a look at this foreground of the ground. It's all in the lower third right there. And then you have the upper two thirds as just kind of like hazy background. And um, this way you can have a more artful picture. Our eyes are um, generally what happens with the rule of thirds is it's a good law to follow because it creates artfulness by using something concrete. Um, so can you see the rule of thirds in this image? Let's figure it out here for a second. So you have, like look at it, I mean it's a pretty obvious thing. You've got the lower third of the ground, right? And then you have this gigantic two thirds of it is sky. So you're really feeling a tone and a mood to this space that you probably wouldn't if you just took a different angle of it. This focal point right here is um, in that lower intersection between the lowest third and the first um, on the left side. So you're seeing the rule of thirds pretty obviously, and that's kind of how to use it. It's great. I, I use the rule of thirds a lot. I can't say all the time, but it's always in my mind. Um, I enjoy it. Now let's talk about contrast for a minute. And this really, this can come in editing or it can come in shooting right now. So you have to think about focal point when it comes to contrast. So really, ultimately, you have a focal point in this Eiffel Tower situation, right? Well, where there's the strongest change of tone, that's where your focal point is going to be. So that means like, okay, where is the strongest, lightest lights and darkest darks? If they are right next door to each other, like in this uh, picture right here, your eyeball instantly goes there. Okay. It's kind of like, um, oh, you know, black and white stripes almost. That's a high contrast image. Contrast can be used the other direction as well. So like, think about this photo right now. If there's not much change in that tone, where does your eye go? I mean, for me, my eye is following where there is the most contrast, which is not much, but because these are all kind of gray tones here. But if you take a look compositionally, that it follows that curve. So in this image, it works for it. It's creating kind of like an all over image, which is really typical of a sand dune, right? Um, it feels kind of tonal and all over. But um, when you have not very much contrast, number one, it creates a mood. And number two, if it works for your photo, um, 
you can see the composition pretty easily because you're you don't have that strong 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 focal point now brightness take a look at this picture all right now i'm going to give you the same picture here and I want you to think about the mood and the tone of this photo. I don't know if it's late in the day. Maybe you get kind of like a darker tone. Whatever it is, check out this same photo now. Really, really different, right? So like different tones are going to give you different moods. So you can have a whole lot of fun in editing photos with this change of brightness, contrast, and composition. So um, we're going to be taking photos. We're going to be um, editing photos this week. This week is all about black and white photography. Hope you enjoyed this.